Lord, through many dangers, toys, and snares, we have come. Lord, it is your grace that has brought us far, and we believe and trust that your grace will lead us home. So we ask this afternoon as we sit at your feet that your God will remind us it is by your grace that we are here. It is by your grace that we are saved. And it is that grace that will carry us through all the trials, temptations, challenges, and difficulties of life. Because those who are in Christ will never be shaken. They will never be moved. Because we are standing on higher ground. We are standing on Christ the rock. Thank you, Lord. Receive honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're welcome. And the church online, you are most welcome. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I will pray that uh, we will all be blessed together. Just thinking about today's topic, which is, uh, you shall not be moved. Tell your neighbor, you shall not be, you shall not be moved. I thought about the confidence of a believer amid his challenges, amid his trials. What gives you confidence as a believer to stand firm and say, I shall not be moved. The storms come your way. The winds blow left and right. But you still stand and say, I shall not be moved. Ask your neighbor, are you standing strong? Friends, what gives us that relaxation in God amid the difficulties? Amid is the challenges that God's children face. Amid is all the difficulties of life. It is only trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. It is only that trust that we have in the Lord. Not because that God's people do not encounter challenges. We encounter them. If we had time for everyone to write down what you're going through, we shall not have time to finish. Not so. Why? And yet you are a child of God. God's children, Christians, we equally experience trials and temptations. We are afflicted left and right. But our encouragement is in our trust in the Lord. The psalmist wrote and said in Psalm 34, that famous Psalm, verse 19. What does it say? Please give it to us so that we read it together. Let us read it together. A righteous man may have many troubles... But the Lord delivers him from them all. A child of God, you are not free from troubles. I love the other version, which says that many are the afflictions of the righteous man. But the Lord delivers him from them. So are you afflicted in one way or the other? Welcome to the club. Hallelujah. Friends, the test of weather or not you are a Christian, is not whether you are free from troubles, rather it is a test by how, it, it is tested by how you overcome. It is your response that makes a difference. Hallelujah. We, are all, we all face challenges, but how you respond determines how firm you are in Christ. Praise the Lord. So the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian is that we don't we don't have to build on our own, us as a Christian. God has already done it for us because he is our refuge in the times of trouble. Are you in trouble? Are you faced with the challenges? God is your refuge. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please clap for the Lord. We read in Psalm, Psalm 46, verse 1. What does it say? Please sound it. Psalm 46, verse 1. Okay, those of us who know it, let's just say it. Okay. God is our refuge in times of trouble. Whenever you are in trouble, beloved, know that you have one who is available 
for you. Now, for us believers, we don't cry like those that do not have hope. So let's have Psalm 125, where our sharing is based this afternoon. Psalm 25, 1, 2, 3, but let's read it all up to verse 5 I read. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now, and forever shall be, world without end. Amen. Friends, this psalm is very interesting. Psalm 125 is among many, I think about 15, if I'm not mistaken, among the 15 ascents that were sung by the Israelites at the end of exile from Babylon. So Psalm 125 is one of those psalms that they were singing while going to Jerusalem. As much as these people were oppressed for over 70 years in Babylon, that did not hinder them from singing to the Lord, praise the Lord. So they sang this song about trusting in the Lord. They sang this song, and we know that when we read this psalm, it doesn't only stop in the Old Testament to the children of Israel, it as well applies to us. Hallelujah. There are lessons for us to learn. Let's look at verse 1, verse 1 and 2. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from, his, from this time forth and forever more. Friends, if your trust is in the Lord, you are like Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the city of Jerusalem, surrounded by so huge, many mountains. I haven't been into Jerusalem. I, I believe God, God will provide a miracle and I will go there. But uh, people like Reverend Hillary will tell you, that when you go to Jerusalem, you see the very mountains that seem to be, you know, protecting or the city is right in the middle of many mountains. Now, when you see a city surrounded by mountains, you know that is its protection. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And now, so the people of Israel, while they went, they trekked to Jerusalem every single year. They went singing, celebrating the goodness of the Lord and putting their trust in God. Unfortunately, not many of them fully trusted in God. Actually, their trust was in this city that is protected by the mountains. But for you, child of God, and those who trusted in the Lord, it is God's protection is far much more than mountains, physical mountains surrounding Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. For nothing can move you. Nothing totally. Not even sickness. Not even poverty. Paul will tell you that nothing will separate you from the love of God. Hallelujah. Are you not, haven't you met someone dying on his bed, on deathbed? And you see someone is actually dying and you has come to visit. You're crying, you're panting, and the, the person is telling you, no, God has shown me where I'm going. It is well. And they're filled with joy. Their faces are smiling. Why? Their trust is in the Lord. Those that trust in God do not fear evil. Not to mean that evil is not going to come. It will come. But when it comes, because you're standing on a higher ground, you're standing on the rock, you're standing on the one who died, was buried, and rose again, and that power that resurrected him is right on the inside of you as a child of God. So what is it, my brothers and my sisters, that is shaking you, causing you to think of quitting? What is it? Is it poverty? Is it delay? You have, you know, you have been on, you know, trusting God for a part in a particular area to break through, and it has delayed. Even then, child of God, you cannot be moved. Hallelujah. Just as this mountain can never be moved 
because it is surrounded by many other mountains, we know there is stability for us who are in Christ Jesus. We are strong, rooted in Christ, because we know he promised, we have just been looking at the, at the, 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 he, the Holy Week. We looked at his death on Friday, or the crucifixion. We looked at his resurrection, and after resurrection, we saw him talking to his disciples, telling them, you will drink poison, and it will not kill you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Friends, I don't want you to be mean with your hand claps. You're not clapping for man. You are clapping for Jesus. Hallelujah. Those who are in Christ Jesus cannot be moved. We are more than conquerors because of the one who is on the inside of me. With him, the psalmist says, I can scale a wall. With him on my side, I am an overcomer. I do not fear, not even witchcraft can move me. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I keep laughing at, at people who try to, to bewitch believers. How do you bewitch a bewitcher? <laughs> Jesus is the greatest witch. He's greater than all the witches. And if you think that... The witchcraft can move me. That is potato. It doesn't work. Beloved, I'll tell you, surely if you're not strongly rooted, that witchcraft will work on you. It takes you to be firm, being strong in the Lord, and fully trust. Trusting. What is this trusting? Trusting can be, can be translated or, or as confide. This is literally meaning Hanging something on or something fixed and nailing the wall that you cannot move. My trust is in the Lord. No matter what comes my way, I cannot be moved. As you are in Christ, nothing can move you from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. So friends, those who are in Christ Jesus, your security is in him alone. It's not in witchcraft. It is not in people. You have seen the people. Gamba nogu. I mean, when your trust is in the Lord, you don't need to know anyone. You don't have to know anyone. I, I said this years back, and I'm just reminded I'll repeat it. When I just came to the cathedral, I came right from college. By the grace of God, I have been here. Five years in the ministry, praise the Lord. And I'll tell you the secret. I hope there are ministers present or online. I, I learned this from Reverend Hillary. When I just came here, I was handed over to him to mentor me. And so my first year, we worked together. One statement I will never forget. He told me, Florence, when you ever find yourself being transferred from one church to another in less than two years, check yourself. And believe me, I worked on it. I said, God, you can't bring me in a place to serve you. And two years I'm taken before I'm completed. Now I'll tell you, five years, I'm good to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because with experience I have acquired, with, with the confidence God has given me, I am very confident that if he moved me, it is time. Two years, it wouldn't be time. Praise the Lord. Now, I'll tell you what I wanted to say. When I just came here, someone, you know, people out there think all sense is everything. By the way, it is not. It is not. Because whoever is called to serve, you are not call, we are not called to serve the church as in a building. We are called to serve God's people. And so God's people are everywhere in churches, in different churches. So when I moved, praise the Lord, I go rejoicing that I'm going to serve other brothers and children and sisters, children of God. So anyway, when I came here, someone asked me. I received my letter, posting letter while I was still in school. And when I came straight, I came straight for the nation. And by that time, I had received my letter to post it here. And so when I came, someone highly blessed asked me, Excuse me, who do you know here? Or who do you know up there? 
in my heart I thought, do I have to know someone to be posted in a place? Whatever had been posted in any other church, did I have to know anyone there? Well, I told her, all I knew is God. Hallelujah. So I am not sent here by man. I am sent here by God. And when God's assignment for me comes to an end, I am ready to walk the door is wide, wide open, rejoicing and smiling that God has enabled me to serve his purpose in his own timing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So friends, child of God, your are securities in Christ. You don't have to look for technical know-who in order to get out of danger. Just align yourself with the Most High, the one who knows you, the one who knows what is going on in your body. Praise the Lord. So only those whose trust is in the Lord find security in Him. Jeremiah. Jeremiah quotes the children of Israel, as I mentioned earlier on. They only moved to Jerusalem rejoicing and priding in the city. But in actual sense, their trust was not in the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 4. Please give it to us so that we read it together. Do not trust in these deceptive words. This is the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. Now, friends, these people's pride was in the temple. They were not trusting in the Lord. They were so obsessed. And I know even right today, there are so many people who are obsessed with religions, pastors. Oh, there is deliverance, lunch hour, things are going to happen. Miracles are happening. And you, you tend to look at man. It is not man that is doing the miracle. It is God who does the miracles. Praise the Lord. And let me warn someone here. There, there are some people that actually God wants to really do great things. But they are hawking from one place to another. They are walking from one pastor to another. And you want to ask, what are you looking for? Seek the Lord. Do not seek money. Money will fail you. Money will disappoint you. But God will never disappoint you. I know fully well there are people that are priding in religion. For them, religion, they are so obsessed. Everything. I'm an Anglican. I am baptized and confirmed. But in actual sense, no relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, you'll go to those pastors, you'll get that miracle, it is temporal. And you don't know the cost that is going to come with. Praise the Lord. Friends, the psalm, the, this psalm is such an encouragement. It is an encouragement for us to confide in the Lord. For us to put all our trust in the Lord. And so this psalm is a song for the disciples. We are disciples. We are followers. If you are a believer and you've given your life to Jesus Christ, you are a follower. John, Jesus said in John 8, 31, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples. Only those who continuously trust in the Lord Abide in his word. Do what the word of God is telling you. And by the way, I must say that it's not about you coming to church every other season. You must have a personal time with God in his word and having a quiet time. We always sing, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Are you sure? Are you really his friend? You want to prove whether you are a true friend of Jesus. Wait what happens to Peter happens to you. At the point of denial. Just a simple thing. You find yourself telling a lie. And not knowing that. Even by telling that little lie. You're denying Jesus Christ. Crucifying him on the cross. And you're busy singing. I'm a friend of God. What about signing those receipts? You surely know. This is not the right amount. I should be signing for. I've always told you about these guys at the, the fuel pump. How they ask you, Madam, how much can I write on the receipt? Really? How much did I give you? But anyway, they are not wrong because they are used. They do it every other day. Unfortunately, people doing it are people that are here every Sunday, 
Every Sunday, they are confessing, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in the power of his resurrection. I'm a friend of God. Really? Let me tell you, friends, you cannot mock God. Never. You can never mock God. Today, I, I said I'm going to restrain myself not talk about single, like, singles. I will not. But I want to tell you, friends, there are many Christians that have mocked God. They are on, Christians only on Sundays, but come Monday when things are tight, they want to go and consult. What are they consulting? You see, they have said there is this pastor, he's giving holy water, and you're taking dirty stuff, and afterwards, you begin to suffer with demons. You keep driving out demons every other day. Every other day, you are the one who is being driven demons out of you. Why? Because of chasing, I mean getting them yourself. Beloved, trust in the Lord. Trusting God calls for self-denial. Children of God, child of God, I want to tell you, a Christian life does not exempt you from trouble. Not at all. Unfortunately, many people come to Christ. Why did you get saved? I want to get a miracle. I want to get healing. It doesn't work that way. Jesus tells us that because they denied me, because they persecuted me, you, they will deny you and they will do the same to you. Hallelujah. So the day you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you opened that door. You opened it that wide because you waged the war with the devil. He's going to pursue you, but you needed to know that I am hidden in Christ. The devil cannot catch me because I'm safe. I am covered by the blood of Jesus. And you need to know you do that knowing that you're walking right with the Lord. The moment you escape and you want to gratify the flesh desires, you've given yourself to the hands of the devil. I'll tell you, as I bring this to a conclusion, as a believer, your trust will be put to test. Your trust as a believer will be put to, to test. A very good example is Abraham. Abraham prayed Ask God and God promised him a son. After how many years? 20 years plus of waiting for a son. The son is given it to him. And what happens later? God says, I want that son. Please sacrifice him. Hey. Now let's, let's see how you're going to stand and still sing and say, I am a friend of God. When God is saying, I need that shoe, my brother. I need you to take up my will. You are going to marry that man, but he's wrong. He's not godly. You're taking that job. It's going to offer you a lot of money, but it's not God's will. Are you sure you are willing to wait on the Lord and do his will? Abraham, his faith, his trust in God was put to test. Likewise, child of God, your trust will be put to test. But I want you to remember that once your trust is in Christ, you will stand firm. Nothing will move you. Not even that thing that you think is so difficult to surrender. God will give you the grace and you'll be able to do what is beyond your ability. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So as I conclude, I want us to know, friends, that God is ever present. In verse 3, these people, let's read it. Verse 3 says, The scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous stretch out their hands to do evil. Friends, God will not allow wickedness to oppress you forever. He will allow it for a short time. He will not allow it to happen forever. And when he allows it, it is for the good. When it trials come your way, stand firm. Be patient. Trust God. He will give you the grace and you will overcome. You look back and ask yourself, by the way, how did I walk through this fire? Because you are in Christ, it will not consume you. Hallelujah. 
God's people through history have testified the same truth. And the good example is Daniel's friends in the fire. But even before you think of Daniel's friends, Daniel himself, the lions themselves could not eat him. My son is called Daniel. He's fond of, I mean, he loves that story. He every time tells me, every time I go home, Mommy, God sent his angels and the lions did not eat me in the, in the den of lions. <laughs> so he puts himself in the shoes of Daniel in the Bible. Yeah, it is in the Bible. Mommy, the lions did not eat me. And David will come and tell you, Mommy, I have killed Goriath. I have killed Goriath because he's called David. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Friends, I want to encourage someone this morning, this afternoon. Remain in Christ. No matter what shakes you, you will not be moved. Because you are like Mount Zion, surrounded by the mountain. God himself, invisible as he is, he is by your side. He will not allow evil to prevail in your life. You have suffered long enough. You have cried long enough. You have waited long enough. Know for sure the Lord is working out a miracle. And all that is happening for the good that at the right time, you will testify. And many will see the testimony and believe in him. By that, God doesn't do, give us these testimonies for ourselves. He gives them to us so that many others will put their trust in him. Hallelujah. Otherwise, these testimonies, I mean the miracles, they are not permanent. Where is Lazarus? Even after being resurrected, he still died. So don't think these miracles are going to be permanent. We are not here forever. We are trekking. We are on our way to heaven. So when miracles happen, they're happening that God's name is glorified. Let's get on our feet. Through many trials, dangers, and snare. Let's sing that part. your eyes. God is going to do certain things in this hour and um, one of the things that God does is to move barriers. Move. There are things that are difficult that the righteous standing on their own they cannot. What makes the Holy Spirit to do the things he does is the word of God. And it's the Holy Spirit. If you're going to get healed now, is the work of the Holy Spirit. If you're going to get have your, your yokes being broken, when he breaks a yoke, he doesn't leave anything the devil can reconnect again. I want you to know this. When the Holy Spirit breaks a yoke, he does not leave parts that the devil can come up and reconnect them. Why? Because the body of Jesus was broken for you. When he was broken, he went down. And that was the final you know, hour, the final season, that when he was broken, he came out with a body that was not broken. He put to an end all the seasons that the enemy could have taken advantage of to bring back certain things that can bring down a believer. When the Holy Spirit is in operation in your life, he will prescribe properly. 
I want to build that as a faith. In Nahum chapter 1, verse 9. I mean, Nahum chapter 1, verse 13. The Bible says, So now I will break his yoke from upon you, and I will tear off your shackles. I am the Lord that he lets thee. All eyes closed now.